Hello everyone, and welcome to part 22 of my Monster Hunter Generations playthrough. Today, we're going on a few of the 4-star quests on the new monsters that we have unlocked at this point in the game. The first monster that we are hunting down today is the Najarala. The Najarala is a giant snake that was introduced in Monster Hunter 4. And so I'm excited to see how it has changed or not changed in this game. Today I am using the uh, Malfestio armor as normal, and I have paired it with the Aerial Charge Blade style today. The, uh, the Charge Blade I'm using is also made of Malfestio parts. Can you tell I like this monster a little bit? I think I like this monster a little bit. Oh, there's a snack. Scary Snack. He has these large resonating organs on his neck and his tail that he can throw at hunters, but it can also use them to uh, cause deafening blasts that will stun me. So we're going to try to not get hit by that. This monster also has a regular roar. The hunter art that I've brought along for today's hunt is the... Uh, what is it? Energy blade. So I wasn't wasn't looking at the bottom screen for a moment there. So the charge blade in aerial style, you can't do the normal charge attack in sword mode when you're on the ground. So instead, they have moved it to the air. So see, if I'm holding A, I just do a single swipe. I can't charge it. So that strong attack has been moved to the X button while I'm midair. Oops, I'm in a not a very good place right here in the corner. Luckily, the Najaranga likes to do these attacks where it surrounds you in its coils and then does an attack where it comes up from below. But with aerial style, it's super easy to get out of its coils. You just gotta jump off of literally any part of it. Insect Glaive used to be very good against it in Monster Hunter 4, so that's why I decided to choose aerial style for today's hunts. It just doesn't really have a good answer to something attacking it from above. Now, I could be holding on right there, but I just decided to attack through the uh, monster's wiggling. So I'm going to try to break his little frills. It looks like I'm not going to be able to, actually, so we'll go for the face instead. I've taught my cats a couple new skills. Right now you see Junkrat's using Explosive Roll. It's a new uh, Palico attack, which they sort of roll around on the ground and drop bombs everywhere. I don't know, I don't think I broke something, but I staggered the monster, so that's good. Get up in the air. And... The thing about this aerial charge blade is that I have to be sort of... Hold on, energy blade. Wow. I gotta be sort of careful on when I time the attack, because I can't attack on the way up. You have to hit the attack on the way down. Alright, so he's underground. Don't want to get hit by this. Does a lot of damage. He also has uh, paralytic toxins in his bite, which are quite bad if he manages to hit you with them. But it's kind of kind of hard to get hit by them if you're using a fast-moving weapon and aerial style. So overall, I think aerial style is the best choice to use against him. You see, I've broken his tail. Some of his little resonator organs are chipped. They're not as perfectly rounded. Now when he shakes his neck like that, any scales that he's thrown out with his tail will explode and they'll cause hunters to stagger. I don't remember if earplugs help against that. I actually haven't fought him in a while. Just because it's... Uh, I need to switch and charge my blade. It's not a monster I fought a lot in the end game of 4 Ultimate. Charge? Why can't I charge? Wait, do I have to be in the air to charge? No, there we go. I must have just been doing the button inputs wrong. Whoop, don't want to get hit by that. So aerial charge blade isn't as flashy as some of the other aerial styles are, but I feel like it's a little bit stronger just on that one hit. Because it seems, it feels like it's a heavy hit, just the way that the hunter moves and crashes down on top of the monster with the charged up sword. Get another mount here, hopefully break his top fins. There we go, I heard them crack. 
So see, now those are chipped too. Axe mode. There goes his fangs. You see that one fang that's facing upwards is snapped off now. And that's most of his breaks. You can also break his little back legs. But they're kind of hard because he always keeps one on the inside. And you only get rewards if you break both of them. So I'm not going to try too hard to get those. He's underground again. I don't know where he is. Oh, he's running. He's going up to area 8. I know I've said this before, but area 8 is such a cool zone with that big grassy field and everything. It's very cool. Very cool. Maybe he's sleeping. I don't think he is. I didn't notice him limping. Oops. Huh, my bad. Finger hit the uh, volume button on the side of the DS. Here he comes. Oh, this is such a cool area. Oh, it's hard to see the scales on the grass, though. I gotta be careful on those. Oh. Ah, he's smacking me in the air. Alright, I take it back. He does have a few attacks that can hit you in the air. But they're few and far between. He has a very hard shell which bounces green weapons. Or not green weapons, yellow weapons. So I need to, need to sharpen pretty soon. But luckily, aerial attacks don't bounce. But right now, I should focus on backing off and healing, because I don't want to die to him. Oh, looks like my cat's broke one of his legs. Because that's the only part left of him to break, and I heard a snap when he was doing that attack, and he recoiled. So I'm not sure which one, but one of his legs is broken. I can't tell in this grass. What's he doing? Is he running? No, he's just moving around. He's being a slippery snack. Uh-oh. Oh, they changed that. That attack used to do um, sonic damage in that you needed... Oh, uh, that was wasted. The neck shaking attack used to do sonic damage. You needed earplugs to not flinch. Okay, he's underground again. I like the new digging sort of particle effects that happen in this game it makes it a lot easier to see where the monster is moving around too in some of the other games there are just tiny little puffs of smoke but in this game there's huge clods of dirt being thrown up very easy to track come here snack snack I have energy blade I want to try to get that off no which I does this run up on his side and energy blade and now Wow. Ah, I love that. Just a giant lightsaber coming out of your charge blade. Get a little closer. I don't imagine he has a ton of health left. The one thing about the Malfestio weapons, which I kind of am not a huge fan of. Hold on. Needed to dodge that. That I'm not a huge fan of on the Malfestio weapons is they don't have very high attack power. Compared to some other weapons of, cur of similar upgrade paths. But they have that sleep element, which sort of sort of helps. That attack right there is his pin attack. He will pull you into his coils and constrict you. It's pretty easy to dodge, though, because unless he hits you with the very tip of his tail when he flicks it in, it usually won't um, get you in the pin. I should really sharpen. But, you know, I figure he doesn't have much health left. Get my charges off. Oh. Let's see. I have a dung bomb, so, yeah. I did that on purpose so I could show you what it looks like. So, see, now he's going to coil up, and he squeezes you. I'm going to hit him with the dung bomb immediately to get out of that, because I don't want to get killed. But that's the coil attack. So, the hitbox is basically that fan part of his tail. I haven't been using the axe much in the air. Should try to do that a little more. Let's see if there's an A combo for the... Nope! Seems like in the air there's only X combos. Not really A much that I've noticed. While I'm in here, I'm going to see if I can break that one inner leg. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. Because I'm not sure which leg was broken originally by my cats. Oh, so he's out of stamina now, so he's going to fall over when he tries to do that. But I don't mind. Give me more time to attack him. Oops. 
Where is he going? Oh, he's running away again. We have this snake's running scared. I'm gonna sharpen up real quickly before I... Oops. I guess I'll sharpen up before he shows up then. One, two, three, four, and we are good to go. I see he's still exhausted. I don't know what he eats here. Maybe the bullfango? Whatever, I'm not gonna find out because I'm just gonna not give him a chance to eat. Oh, there's a mount. This will be an easy one. Maybe I can get an energy blade off fully charged here. We'll, we'll see. I need to get... Nope. Close. I just need one more level of charge on my thing. It's hard to get charge in your uh, sword blade without using the aerial attack. Oh, I can get energy blade off right here. Oh, he roared. That's unfortunate. He canceled the energy blade. And we're just going to not get hit by this. In theory. There we go. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, that does a lot of damage. That's normally how he'll kill people. Or how he'll kill me. Is I'll just get caught in that tail. Oh. Uh, I didn't mean to do that, but it worked out very nicely. Because otherwise I would have gotten smacked. Where'd he go? Oh, he's still right by the entrance. That's not good. I'm going to try to lure him back a little bit. Come here. Thank you. Thank you, Bullfango. That's exactly what I needed. I was thinking, you know what this hunt needs? Small monsters to annoy me. And lo and behold, they delivered. So I don't think I've mentioned this before, but when you are in axe mode with charge blade as such... One second. When you're in axe mode and you charge up the shield, if I can get it... It'll give your axe moves, I think it's a 5 or a 10% boost in power, I don't recall. But I know it's a it's, an, it's a pretty nice boost that it will uh, give you. So it's normally good, if you're going to be using axe mode a lot, to uh, charge up the shield. Even if you don't use that big discharge, the charged up shield will still give you a significant power boost. Is there a subquest? Wyvern tier. I think I got one of those. So since we're moving through the base camp anyway, we're going to drop that off. There we go. Subquest done. Let's go finish off the snake. I don't know where he went. I'm guessing he went to one because it looked like he dug under the base camp. Nope. I guess we'll check two, then four. No, he's in two. You see how the Aptonoths are sort of acting nervous? Uh, herbivore monsters, not the Bullfango. But, um, Popo and whatever the things in the desert are called, I'm forgetting off the top of my head, Apsaros and Aptonoth will act sort of nervous whenever there's a large monster in the adjacent area. So, there he is, taking a nice little nap. We're going to place down some bombs for that nice juicy triple damage bonus. And, ba-boom! Let's finish ourselves a snake. Hey, there we go. Right before he roared. None of that. Well, that's the first hunt of the day done. Let's see what's coming up next. Our next quest for today is to go after a old monster that comes back from the very first generation of Monster Hunter games, the queen of the land herself, the Rathian. The Rathian is a... Yeah, it's actually not A. It's one of the first wyvern monsters that you face. It actually looks like a dragon. It is the female counterpart of the male Rathalos, which is more aerial based, but we'll fight him a little later in this playthrough. Right now, we're going to hunt down the female. The Rathian is large and quite aggressive. It's the monster that I thought was going to show up when the Astalos showed up on that one egg quest. It's very defensive of its eggs, and that can be used to a hunter's advantage by luring her back into a certain area. So, I'm gonna guess she's still- oops, I ran past the entrance. I actually don't want to go through six. Six has those annoying cliffs. We're gonna use that to our advantage by Get, well, not to our advantage, but we're going to assume that she is in five with her eggs to start out with. We'll see, though. 
<clears throat> Still using Aerial Style for this one. I thought it'd be interesting. I'm quite familiar with this monster, as, yeah, see how the Aptonauts are acting up over there? They're sort of sniffing the air nervously and bucking. That means there's a monster in the next area, and since I just came from three, five's the only other adjacent area. I've had quite a lot of practice against this monster, so I'm feeling pretty good about this hunt. And there she is, the Raytheon. Raytheon, Raytheon. I've heard people say it both ways. I say it both ways occasionally. I don't know what the actual way is, but, you know, they both work. They both get the point across. Hello. Uh-oh. So she has very strong legs, which she can do many uh, charge attacks that track you. And a large poisonous tail that you gotta watch out for. Hopefully you won't get hit by any of her backflips, but we'll see. Oh, this is also one of the monsters that does very large amounts of elemental damage. Shoots fireballs most of the hunt. As opposed to some of the other monsters we fought, such as the Yan Kutku, or... What was the other one that spat fire? I don't remember. There was another monster we fought that spat fire. But it did it only occasionally. These monsters just basically spew it all the time. Got a drop. Nicely done. I want to try to cut off her tail, just because it gets some good items. You can get her rare off of her tail, and rare items are always good. Alright. This is also the area where she was first encountered in the original Monster Hunter game, so that's sort of nostalgic playing her here. Oh, nice. I dodged through that with the aerial jump. The aerial style jump attack that you start out the combos with will uh, give you a couple evasion frames, like right there. That should have hit me in midair, but it didn't, because I was in the middle of a jump. Here she comes again. Gotta charge up my weapon. I think I should be good on charge for now. We're going to try to get an energy blade off when we can. I think I might be doing something wrong with this aerial charge blade, but I can't figure out another attack combo once you're in the air. It just seems to be that one strong slice. Speaking of strong slices... Oh! Energy blade? That was pretty good. Nice. Evaded that. Broke her wing and got him out. When you break the Raytheon's wings, you'll sort of trim the little claws off the front of it. If you look at her right wing compared to her left wing, you'll see some of the little teeth on it are snapped off. There goes her back. That's good. Whoops. Charge up. Ah, she's bouncing. A lot of these monsters will bounce um, yellow weapons, so I gotta make sure I stay in green sharpness. Where is she going? Is she running? Yeah, it looks like she's running off to a different area. That's alright. Gives me time to sharpen, recuperate, and for Genji and Junkrat to stop being dead. She's probably going to go to four. Maybe two. Nope. Going to four. Oh wait, is she eating? Oh, I thought she was eating for a moment. Oh no. That was scary. I thought she was going to throw the fireball at me right as I came down off that cliff. I tried to aerial through that. So, since she's in rage now, she'll be flying a bit more. I'm going to try to knock her out of the air with a flash bomb. I haven't done this yet on video, but a lot of monsters that fly can be sort of annoying to get down. But, there's a very easy way to knock them down out of the air. You can make your own flash bombs, utilizing flash bugs and bomb casings. Or, you can get the easy ones from the box. Unfortunately, that didn't work for me, because she was in the middle of a backflip when I threw the bomb. Her backflip in the air is what she will poison you with, with her tail. Whoops. It has a very telltale signature when she is standing on the ground. It'll take two little steps backwards and then the backflip comes out. 
When the Wraithian's in the air, however, it's a lot harder to anticipate that backflip. But normally, if it stands right in front of you for a short period of time, or not stands rather, hovers right in front of the hunter for a short period of time, a backflip's pretty much assured to come. I think that sounded like another part break. Yep, there goes the other wing. Unfortunately, breaking the wings isn't actually uh, what it sounds like. It's just breaking some of the talons and spikes off the wings. The Raytheon still has full ability to fly. Oh, that was nice. I jumped over the tail. My cats are just taking a beating here. I should probably switch them out for later. The Pelicos, after you take them on a few quests, they will lose some enthusiasm. It's actually called Enthusiasm. There's a little chart on their stat page. Don't lose some enthusiasm. They won't do as well. So you have to make sure to switch them out sometimes. Alright, I'm going to charge this up. And then try to get an Energy Blade off on the tail. She's doing a triple there. Gives me plenty of time. There we go. Get a nice hit off on the tail. I either want to knock it down or have it be shooting fireballs when I do the energy blade. Speak of the devil. Wow. Oh, I hit its leg. Oh, well. Looks like it's going to run away now. That's all right. We'll just follow it. This monster, more than some other ones, excuse me, is very important to use a paintball on because it flies around a lot from area to area. There's often times, uh, well, not often times, the chance that was bad, bad grammar. Often times, it will run away to several areas away, and it'll be sort of hard to find. There we go. Got my third mount off. Aerial charge blade seems to be pretty good for mounting monsters. It seems. I'm not sure though. I'm not completely sold on it, just because it doesn't have as much you can do in the air. It just seems like it's that one and done. But, you know, it is fun. I'll give it that. Aerial style is always a blast. I want this tail. I don't know how close I am to cutting it off, though. Oh, looks like Genji's activated his piercing boomerangs. That's good. The piercing boomerangs on the cat will hit multiple times as they go through a monster's hitbox. So it makes them really good for large monsters, especially. This monster is just a little small for pierce shots to be very good. But, you know, they still work well. Get this charge off. Nice, nice, nice. Oops. I want to try to knock it out of the air with an aerial attack. Show it who's the boss around here. Oh, I think one of my cats are knocked out. Oh, I am too. Or I was until she hit me. Well, luckily she didn't hit me with a big attack. No, get back here. Running away again. The Rathian has a little bit of a habit of doing this. Wonder where she's going this time. Back to four? No, she's going to nine. This is what I was not looking forward to. Zone 9 is very narrow, and there's not a whole lot of room to dodge. But with aerial style, there's always the option of going up rather than just out when you do a dodge. So I think we'll be fine. It sounds like it's eating, though, because I hear it doing attacking noises. Yeah, it's eating. I don't want to let that happen. I want to cut that tail off. I know I'm bouncing, but it's still doing some damage to the tail, and it's staying still, so I figured that was a pretty good chance. Now, it dropped a shiny when it ate, so I'm going to try to pick that up. If I can. Can I do one more? Nice, nice. I think I got it. Ah, uh, just a wyvern tier. Oh, well. Rathian has quite a host of things that you can get from her shiny drops. Gonna get an energy blade off. Oh, nice. I broke the face. That's good. It'll break off some of the scales that are uh, on the face area. Now I just need to break the tail, and that is a completed Rathian. Oops. That was close. 
Oh, that was a fast tail swipe. Gotta watch out for those. That's a new move, though, chaining the snap into a tail swipe. Ah, there, where she did those two steps back. That's a very good sign that she's going to do one of those backflips. Ah, there we go. There's a tail. That was very pretty, if I do say so myself. Oops. Okay, well, this hunt's probably pretty much wrapped up. Oops, that's... That's not what I wanted. I mean, yay, I got an herb, but... I want that tail. I'm gonna get greedy and try to get it. Even though the Rathian's right here and still quite angry at me. Oh, that was nice. I stopped her from doing the big fireball attack. Oops. Alright, looks like it's running away. Unfortunately, the paintball has just worn off. So, we're going to have to do a little bit of running around to find where this thing went. I'm going to guess... I'm going to check 8 first. 8 to 10, 3. Because I have no clue where it goes after 9. No, 8's a bit too small for it. We'll check 10. can't have gone too far. It's probably around here somewhere. I don't think it was limping either, so I don't think it would go back to its nest in five. Sometimes if you're fighting the Rathian or the Rathalos and you're in their nest area, which is zone five, oh, there it is. You can pick up one of the eggs and just sort of walk around with it, and eventually the monster will come back to that area faster than it would normally, because it can sort of sense that you've touch the eggs and you've messed with its babies. Oh, nice. Well, I'm happy now. I knocked it out of the air. I broke all of its parts. All that's left now is to finish the hunt. Oh, it knocked me out of my supercharge. Oh, we're gonna get it here. And there we go. It's limping. Well, because it is a Rathian, and Rathian's rare items will only really drop if you capture it, um, I'm going to do just that. Well, rephrase, they don't only drop if you capture it, but you can't carve its rare items off of its body, so I'm going to capture it to give me a better chance of getting its rare. As long as you break its head, back, and tail, that will give you a decent chance, but for the best chance, capturing it is always recommended. Some monsters you don't want to capture if you want their rares, but Rathian is not one of those some. I don't know where it went, I would have assumed it went to five. Huh. Maybe it ran to two. That's odd. I'll go check two. Because it was just in three. A trick that you can use if you're fighting flying wyverns and you don't have a paintball on them is if you tap the target camera every uh, very periodically, about at one second intervals. Oh, I'll show you right here. You will sort of lock onto the monster, and then your hunter will face the direction the monster flies. So I'm doing it right now. Just tap, 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 and then see, I'm looking the way it flew. So last I saw, it was going this way which looks like it went directly for area 5. It's not as precise as using a paintball, obviously, but it sometimes will save you some time on a hunt if you lose track of something, or if a paintball wears off just as the monster is starting to fly away. I'm gonna go catch up and finish off the dragon. Hopefully it went to sleep already, because that'll make this whole thing a lot easier. Yep, there we go. So, I'm pretty sure monsters heal a little bit when they're asleep. Uh, when they're asleep on their own, not when you put them to sleep with a sleep weapon. But I think it's a pretty insignificant amount. And there we go. Got ourselves a pet dragon. Well, that's the end of this part of the playthrough. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment if you have any suggestions, and subscribe if you don't want to miss the rest of the series. See y'all later. Bye.